Okay, we're still working with our data. <laughs> At some point, we're gonna start training a model. What have I done so far? Okay, so just to recap for a second, I've got this whole database of crowdsourced colors with a label. And now I've converted all that stuff to tensors. So, um, and I'm just looking at the inputs now, the inputs that I wanna use for my machine learning model. So I have 5,643 RGB values. So the shape of the tensor is 5,643 comma three, and I can look at it here. I have all the RGB values normalized to zero, between zero and one. Now, I need to do the whys. I need to figure out what are the target outputs associated with each RGB value. And this is exciting because we are going to cover, we being me and you being the person watching, I am going to cover a concept known as one hot encoding. So we have to, to understand why we're going to do one hot encoding, I, we need to jump all the way to what would essentially be like the very end of this video series. What am I asking the neural network that I'm gonna build, right? The neural network that I'm gonna build is gonna have three inputs, R, G, B, it's gonna have some architecture, some configuration of all the stuff in the middle. The inputs being RGB, what do I want the outputs to be? The output should be a label, right? I want to say, is it reddish? Is it blueish? But this is just the label that we, I've used as a human being to say what I think it is. Like if I was doing image classification, the label would be cat or dog or rainbow or unicorn. But those strings are not going to be meaningful in the sort of numbers-based neural network system that I'm building. I need this to return a number. So we could think if there are nine possible labels, I could return the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. Now while I could try to do something where I just have one output and that's a floating point number that kind of I round to the nearest integer that indicates the label, that's not going to work so well. What I actually really want is I want a probability value. I want a probability value for each one of these labels. So we could imagine if there are nine labels, why do nine is such a, I should have made it 10. If I could go back, travel back in time and start this whole series over, I would have made 10 labels because all this would be so much easier to work out. But imagine there are nine labels. I don't know why I'm drawing it like this, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And what if I had a probability? Like, oh, there's a 10% chance it's the first label, and there's a 20% chance it's the second label, and then zero, 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 and then a 70% chance, zero, zero, right? All of these values might add up to 100%. And we could say, ah, it's most likely this one, which is index zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, which maps to, you know, purplish. So, I'm trying to create the target outputs. If I know that this particular color should be purplish, the th target output that I want is actually 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nine labels, zero through eight indices. This is one hot encoding. I am taking the idea of index six and making a vector, a one-dimensional vector full of zeros with a one in the spot that matches the label. A 100% chance, of if, because if the neural network was working perfectly, this is the output that I would get. So one hot encoding is the idea of creating your vector, having all zeros and sort of flipping a bit on in a way, and just one of them, a switch goes on and that's assigned one. Now, I could come up with an algorithm pretty easily Problem, not easily, but I could work hard on it and try it, it would be hard. And I could say, take all of my labels and I could convert every single label into an array with a one in the right spot. Luckily for us, we're using tensorflow.js and it has a function called tf1hot. So I'm gonna create the whys for this system using the tf.1hot function and that's what I'm gonna go do next. All right, so let's go look at the code. And now what I need to do, I made this colors array. Now let me make this labels array. And if I say labels.push, now here's the thing. What I want is for this, I mean, I could just push the label in it. So let's just do that, a record.label. Let's just look at this real quick. And uh, I'm gonna 
comment out the console logging, and I'm going to say uh, console.log labels. So let's just see. This should be, right? This is all the labels, the strings of the labels. So the first thing I need to do is convert each one of these into an index value. So I need a mapping for that. All right, so I need to find my list of labels. I could just type them out. Uh, labels, oh no, but uh, all labels equals, uh, I, could say, I could say label list, let me call it label list. Um, and, uh, grayish, bluish, but I have that right here, right, in crowdsource color when I made those buttons. <laughs> These are all the labels, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I come back to what I'm doing here and just put this here and then uh, let me just uh, do a find replace, whoops. Let me do a find replace for, ah, just this. I just need to get rid of this. Ah, <laughs> boy, <laughs> yes, you're watching me like failing at doing find replace. And then uh, let me look for uh, ish and replace that with ish comma. There we go. Now I have my array, my label list array. So now, what I want to put in, in the labels array is not the actual string of the label, but label list index of that label. So the index of function, I need another parentheses there. The index of function will say, look for this particular element in the array and give me back its index. So let's look at that now. Uh, let me run this again. And we can see, there we go. Now, I have 5,643 index values. And guess what? This is when I now want to go, and I apologize, and I wrote tf.1hot up there. You can't see it. So let me just write that again. tf1hot is the name of the function. Let's go to the TensorFlow.js documentation page, <laughs> right over here. And oh, look, I already have it open to one hot. How convenient. And basically, this documentation, let's see if we can understand this. I need to give it all the indices. That's what I already have. I mean, oh, but you know what? These have to be a tensor already. So first I need to make a tensor of all those indices. Let's do that. Um, so I want to say uh, let label tensor, 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 labels tensor, let's call it, equal tf tensor 1d uh, labels. And let's say, let's just look at that, label tensor, labels tensor dot print. Let's just make sure that's kind of, right? We can see that's a big, long tensor of all of the labels. And then, now the Y's is tf.1hot. So if I go back and look at this, 1hot needs the list of all of those index values, which are 0 through 8, and the depth. The depth means how many possibilities are there, and there are nine possibilities. And on value will default to 1, and the off value defaults to 0. But if I, for some reason I wanted to one hot encode with 3, the number 3 for every spot, and the number 0.1 for every non-spot, I could change those values. But all I need to do then is say one hot uh, labels tensor and um, 9. And then I could say y's.print. So x's.print and y's.print. So now I have my x's and y's. I remember the previous video I did this, I looked at all the RGB values, I divided by 255, and then I, um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I lost my train choo-choo of thought here. <laughs> I, um, and then I made those into a 2D tensor. And now I've made the y's, and I, what I do want to see is console log, let's look at x's.shape and console.log y's.shape also. Okay, ready? Let's look and see if everything seems right. Ah, indices must be of data type int32. Oh, interesting. So when I made this tensor, my labels, if we look at them, are actually, like if I go back and console log the labels, those are floating point numbers because I wasn't really worrying about it when I was just working with regular JavaScript arrays, but I need to very specifically make sure that I set the data type. Index values for a one-hot vector cannot be floating point values. So I think if I do this, we can see that fixed it, right? So now I have, 
the shape, right? This makes sense. There's 5,643 data points. There's each data point for the inputs for the X's has an RGB, that's three. And there are nine possible labels. So I have the shape is 5,643, nine possibilities. And each one of those just is one hot encoded. So this means bluish and this means purplish or whatever the mapping is, I don't remember. The second one is greenish and uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The sixth one is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is pinkish. That's the sixth one. Yes, whatever. So I, this is going to be really important. Which labels actually go with which index values is something that I'm going to have to save for the duration of this project because when I show the results to the user, I want to actually show the strings, not the number value. Okay, so I am now ready to try to fit. First, I have to, so what's next? I need to architect the model, right? I got the, all of the input data and I got all of the output data. I need to divide into trading and testing, architect the model, fit the model, and then I'm sort of done, maybe. So that's going to be like many more videos <laughs> into the future. So I got at least three or four little more steps to build here until I have this like final version of this color classifier built with TensorFlow.js. Wait, wait. Don't leave just yet. Oh, wait. Don't leave just yet. Uh, I do want to think about memory management. And I'm, maybe I'm going to think about memory management later. But, and the X's and Y's I'm going to want to use in the next video. But I probably should after I make the one hot vector. I don't need... When I'm working with lower level TensorFlow.js, I've got to clean up stuff I'm not going to use anymore, and I don't need these labels anymore. So I can dispose that one. So that was just the last little tidbit here, and then I'll move on. In the next video, I'm going to start creating the uh, architecture of the neural network model itself. And, oh, I'm going to introduce some new concepts, softmax and cross-entropy. Isn't that exciting?